Hot Toys, Back to the Future 2 DeLorean Time Machine is finally here. Hello my friends, Anthony here, Six Skill Mafia. Thanks for tuning in. We had a bit of a problem with the first batch earlier this year with the breaking axles, but it looks like Hot Toys did end up fixing it this time around in the second batch, which is what I'm showcasing and reviewing for you today. Hot Toys really outdid themselves on this one, I gotta say. This is such an upgrade compared to the Mark 1 DeLorean, minus one or two things that I'm not too happy about, which I'll cover a bit later in the video. But overall, I'm extremely pleased with this version. I'm hoping we'll see a Back to the Future 3 DeLorean sometime in the near future to complete the trilogy. Now, the DeLorean does retail in at 825 US dollars. I know this is still available for pre-order up on Sideshow.com. Personally, I grabbed mine from Off the Rack, so shout out to them for getting this to me in a safe and timely manner. I put the links of both of them in the description below, guys. So go ahead and check them out if you haven't already. Don't forget to hit that like button, and if you're new to the channel, why not hit that subscribe? Greatly appreciate it, and it helps support the channel. In order to get to the power button, you're going to have to lift the hood forward towards the headlights here. It's a fairly easy process. You just want to grab it from below the windshield and lift upward. I'd recommend pulling back some a little here like I'm doing just to prevent any scratching near the front here. To power on the DeLorean, you can use a USB-C cable, which is not included by the way. That connects underneath, or you can use batteries here. You can go ahead and insert them through the spare tire here if you unscrew it. My main issue is that the power button here is not a toggle switch. So if you're someone like me who has their collection and display cases, smart plug outlet's just not gonna do it for you. It won't power it back on. So you're gonna have to open the hood each time, press this button twice. Once just for the headlights and a second time to turn on the wheels in the undercarriage. So it's kind of a bummer. Installing the frame here can be a little troublesome, I've heard. Basically, you just wanna align the pegs and snap them into place. What I found what worked for me is that instead of trying to push them straight into the holes, I try to come in on an angle with one peg and then push down to the opposite side should snap right in, at least it did for me. You'll have to repeat the process a few times though, but just take your time, man, because uh, you don't want to end up breaking this thing because it is pretty fragile. Now that same rule applied to me when I was installing the front bumper, but honestly, the whole process is fairly painless and it should only take you a couple of minutes. Installing the wires and hoses is fairly straightforward. In fact, the majority of them are already secured to the car. All you have to do is bend them a little to secure them into place. Now, I've heard a lot of people struggle with this, but if you have a heat gun, it makes installing these things a breeze. Honestly, I couldn't recommend a heat gun enough if you're a collector of six scale. This definitely must have tool in my arsenal. And seriously, guys, they're 20 bucks. Go get one. The same rule applies here for the rear bumper. A little bit of heat to bend the rubber hoses and they'll fit right in. The gold wing doors hold themselves up no problem at all at 90 degrees with four preset angles. You can both hear and feel the doors click in once they lock into their respective angles. The same rule applies when closing the door as well. Just be a little careful when closing the door. Don't put too much pressure on it because if you push too quick, it'll go through all the clicks and, and slam down on you. As I mentioned before, to power up the DeLorean, you're gonna need a USB-C cable that attaches underneath right here. Once powered on into the second power position, you can see the cascading lights blinking sequential order one through five right here, along with two warm LEDs in the front and four green LEDs in both the front and rear. Now there is a little bit of weathering underneath here though, but to be honest, I think it could be a little more weathered, but that's just a little nitpick. That's not even a big deal at all. And you're honestly never really looking much down here anyway. Now here's an underneath view of extending and retracting the tires. The tires click about four times. Uh, you can definitely feel when they're set. You just want to be a little careful and don't force them. You'll be able to tell, trust me. You just want to make sure to brace the frame whenever you're retracting or extending these wheels. Once you have them outward, you can go ahead and rotate these like no problem. The Mr. Fusion device is mounted on the rear of the car here, as you can see, replacing the need for plutonium, the ability to convert household waste into energy. Now to attach the Mr. Fusion, you just simply line up the, the pegs and pop it right in the slot, super easy. It, it, it stays secure enough. I mean, you can pull it right back off with ease, but uh, you know, opening and closing it here with the, with the lid and the latch doesn't, doesn't make it come off at all. So it, it, it stays real nice. Should you want to remove it though, all you have to do is just apply a little bit of pressure here on the bottom like so and pops right off. So the rear brake lights, they're nice and bright. I think they came out really well. However, I'm not really a fan of this reactor cooling vents. Uh, the colors just, you know, it's nice that they light up. I just, I feel like the light's a bit too warm. California license plate also looks great. Has a nice reflective layer on it. So the light just casts and reflects real nice off of it. 
Overall, the level of detailing on this DeLorean is amazing. I just keep looking at it in awe every time I glance over my display. I absolutely love this thing. The hubcaps are well made and we have a nice DMC logo in the center. The tires roll effortlessly as well and are pretty solid. Now this is the part most people get worried about, the hover conversion. Now what I do is obviously make sure it's elevated, then basically I just use my fingers, I put them behind them and I push forward while bracing the front. You'll start to feel the wheels click a few times until they just can't anymore, so don't push it too hard, but you'll be able to tell. And then you just rotate them facing downward. It's really not that bad at all. Just take your time with it. When you want to convert it back, just push the tires back up and then push inward. Again, brace the car a little bit when you're doing so, because there's a little resistance here and you don't want to push the wrong way and end up snapping this. All right, now my biggest complaint was the base that Hot Toys gave us. Now I appreciate having the sloped angle, but the thing is just so cheaply made in my opinion, and it's kind of ugly. So I'm not even gonna show it off. There's plenty of other reviewers out there that do show it. If you're interested, go ahead and check them out. Instead, I'm gonna show you a custom acrylic stand made by my friend Seth over at Blue Ridge Laser. You can go ahead and find him on Facebook. Now, the cool thing about this is he does offer you a two inch riser or an optional four inch. Personally, I like the two inch riser. The four is pretty cool, but it's just a little bit too high for my taste. And on top of the fact that it does take up a little bit more uh, height clearance if you again have this displayed in a shelf. Maybe if you had a Magic case, something a little bit taller, I can see this. So it's nice having the option available, but for me, I prefer the two inch risers. Assembly is a breeze, but you wanna make sure you do align it properly. As you can see here, it can fit this way, but it's misaligned. So just make sure you're placing it on the right way so it's properly balanced. Not only did he make this stand, he makes a wide variety of stands for your figures and he'll even do some custom orders for you. So go hit him up. What I like most about it is not only is the sleek low profile, but the way the lights shine through the acrylic here and cast on the floor of my display really makes this DeLorean pop. Now, speaking of lights, I think Hot Toys did a pretty good job overall, especially like the green underneath. However, the tire lights aren't quite movie accurate. It's not really a deal breaker for me, obviously. And I'm sure it doesn't really bother many of you out there, but I would have preferred a cooler light. So if I feel up to it, maybe I'll do some modding on here. There's plenty of great mods over at Mike's Mods as well that I'm very interested in grabbing, make this as accurate as possible, but you know, it's just whether or not I have the time to do it. But if you guys are interested in checking those out, I will put a link in the description below. Anyway, guys, those are my thoughts on the Mark II DeLorean from Back to the Future 2 by Hot Toys. Overall, I'm going to rank this an 8 out of 10. I think the build quality is quite what you would expect from Hot Toys. It's both solid and sturdy. And the overall assembly process is quite friendly, I think, to any skill levels, whether you're a novice or an expert. It doesn't take very long at all to set up, which is very, very nice. The lighting, as I mentioned, could be a little better, and the stock display stand is a bit chintzy, but those really are my only two negatives about this. Overall, I'm super excited that I have this. This Back to the Future 2 is my favorite movie of the trilogy, and my figures finally have a vehicle that they can be displayed with. But let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Did you guys pick up a DeLorean, or are you thinking about it? What other thoughts do you have that maybe I didn't touch on or maybe you would have preferred to see? Anyway, guys, thanks again for watching. Don't forget to hit that like and subscribe if you enjoy the content, and I'll see you guys next time.